Hi, my name's Julie Marklou. I'm a watercolour tutor and I'm going to show you how to make this portrait. I started my portrait by drawing on tracing paper so I could make any adjustments on there to transfer onto watercolour paper. This avoids me rubbing out mistakes on the watercolour paper and spoiling the surface. I'm drawing the proportions by eye but there are more accurate ways of measuring. See the teaching blog on my website for other methods. I transferred the drawing onto my watercolour paper by rubbing charcoal on the underside of my tracing paper, turning it over and fixing it to the watercolour paper. Then I drew over the lines again with a hard pencil which presses the charcoal into your watercolour paper. Before applying my first wash I masked out the highlights in the hair with masking fluid and left it to dry before painting in the sky and the suggestion of hair against it. I then added salt crystals for a textured effect in the background. The second wash was to establish the major colour shapes. I did this by first adding a very wet clear wash with a large brush and beating my paints up for speed of application. I had the photographic reference on my computer screen and a colour thumbnail next to me for the organisation of the complementary colour shapes. I then started to add the main colour values in the face with a series of wet in wet washes. Here I'm applying the same principles to the hands that I'd done on the face, establishing colour and tone to build texture and detail on at a later stage. I also masked out the highlights on the camera with masking fluid. You'll notice at this stage I'm not defining the edge between the camera and the darker area of the hand. I don't see it as necessary to try to add what you can't see. Notice here that I'm using a smaller brush for the detail and a kitchen roll in my other hand as I need to control the water ratio on my brush to get the finer detail. I built up many of the facial washes with a hard and soft edge technique. This involves applying a clear wash to a small area and adding pigments to one edge only whilst allowing the pigment to slowly travel towards the other edge without reaching it. This leaves a smooth transition from a hard, intense or dark edge to a lighter, soft edge.
you'll notice in this clip that I've built up many more detailed washes wet on dry on the face by continuing with the previous techniques discussed and also that I've removed the masking fluid from the hair highlights so I can work towards making them look less like worms and more like an intrinsic body of hair. I also use more clear washes for intensifying the background and a fine mist sprayer for softening additions without disturbing the pigment underneath. I wanted the composition to be divided into vertical and horizontal stripes. The original photographic reference was taken in a boatyard with a lot of corrugated iron sheeting of different colours, which appealed to my love of stripes. Here I'm painting on the edge of a ruler, angled so that only the brush touches the surface. Finally, I took a last look at the colour balance as it had been my intention to paint in complementary colours of greens and browns. I felt the value mass of the jacket was too overwhelmingly blue and dark, so I splattered it and daubed it more with brown and green to break it up and tie it to the rest of the painting a bit more. I also added a little bit more salt to it as I had done throughout to give it more texture. Hello again. I hope you found that interesting. If you'd like to learn more about watercolour from me, you can buy pre-recorded classes on arttutor.com or you can sign up for live webcam classes with me on Powhow Online College. Um, I do hope you can follow me, look me up on my website. I'm Julie Mark Clue, watercolour tutor. Uh, thank you for watching. Bye bye then.